Summit Webcast Series on the European Council. Webcast on the institution's role in European decision making. This video considers the role of the European Council in EU decision making. The institution's role often seems confusing. On the one hand, the Lisbon Treaty prescribes the European Council a guiding role. It says, The European Council shall provide the Union with the necessary impetus for its development and shall define the general political directions and priorities thereof. On the other hand, the treaty limits the institution's legislative power by saying, It shall not exercise legislative functions. Wolfgang Wessels, Professor for European Politics and an expert on the European Council, will explain this paradox. Professor Wessels, if the European Council shall not exercise legislative functions, what kind of decisions does the European Council then take? The treaty is not correct. The European Council takes nearly all key decisions for the system making and the policy making of the European Union, for example, on the budget on the migration crisis, on the monetary crisis. And why is it this constellation that can decide on all these important matters? Uh, apparently, at the end, the political leaders of the member states are still those who take most decisions because they have a certain authority, national legitimacy, and they can give guidance to other institutions, for example, and especially the Council of Ministers, which then more or less have to obey what their bosses have decided. Enrico Letta, who was Italian Prime Minister during 2013 and 2014, will explain how a meeting of the European leaders works. So the meeting is a, is a meeting where there's a mix between discussion and decisions, but uh, it's a very strange place because the decisions are not decisions like the one, for instance, of the central bank where the decision is a fact, is a number, is a figure. Uh, interest rates from 0.5 to 0.25, for instance. The decisions are uh, positions. We take positions rather than we take decisions. Uh, so we say we support, so we welcome, so we report, we uh, push the Commission to uh, go in that direction or in another direction. So it's a, a very, very political exercise. Enrico Letta's description of taking positions and communicating them to the Commission describes how the treaty's words of providing a general impetus work in practice. In the conclusions of the June 2016 meeting, for instance, the European Council formulated such an invitation. Regarding agricultural issues, the European Council invites the Commission to urgently implement all necessary support measures. Martin Seelmeier, Head of Cabinet of the European Commission, will explain how this practice translates into the working relationship between the European Council and the European Commission. Well, the President of the Commission is one of the leading members of the European Council and they need each other because the Commission is the government of Europe, the European Council is the crisis manager of Europe. Mm -hmm. They have to work together, the Commission has to bring proposed initiatives, analysis to the table, uh, then the leaders sit together with the President of the Commission and then everybody goes back to their capitals but the President of the Commission and his institution stay in Brussels and have now to implement and to manage this. So we need both, we need both. The President of the Commission needs the leaders to make bold decisions in the crisis and the other way around, without the Commission, the European Council would have no follow-up, no implementation and no preparation. This relationship of mutual support between the two institutions changed during financial and euro crisis. Enrico Letta was Italian Prime Minister during that period. During my period, it was very clear that the European Council uh, raised and the European Commission decreased this role. It was because of the emergency of the situation, the crisis of the Euro, the need for uh, very fast decisions and the need also of decision well communicated by leaders. This is why the European Council took 
the center of the stage and the European Commission became more uh, auxiliary. The crisis not only changed the relationship to the European Commission. In the emergency situation that Enrico Letta described, decisions were taken outside the legal framework of the EU as intergovernmental treaties. However, in such intergovernmental treaties, the European Parliament had no decision-making power. And it especially also with the help of the European Court of Justice and his rulings, the democratic legitimacy of decision-making in the European Union was slightly undermined. Now, the European Council always justified that by pointing to the urgency of decision making. We, we have to react right now, the markets are not waiting for us. I do think this throws up a very interesting theoretical question. Can you actually go beyond the confines of the treaty? Can you also go beyond the confines of democracy and the separation of power if there is an emergency situation? The clear answer by the European Council was yes, you can and yes, you have to do that. Although they always had in mind, this is at least my perspective, that later those decisions need to be put on a sound democratic footing. Still waiting for that. Regarding the role of the heads of state or government in European decision making, the experts from this video agree that key decisions are de facto taken by the European Council. Do you think that the European Council will continue to be the de facto decision maker for major issues in the future? Yes. As, at least as long as member states are so important and as least, at least as long as the European Union is so important. Because if the European Union is not important anymore for member states, then the heads of state or government will not come to the European Council. They only come because they think, they think it's essential, significant for their own actions. So in the moment I don't see any kind of alternative for the decision making of the European Council in key issues. The question, of course, is, is this the most legitimate body to take decisions? And that's an open question to all of us as citizens.